Hello and welcome to this Adobe Photoshop tutorial where we will be learning about quick selections. You will want your layers panel open by going to Window, Layers, and we're going to start by going to Quick Selection, which you can find with the shortcut W, and you can click and hold to find a few different selection tools here. Let's go to the Quick Selection tool here in the middle, and we can change the size of that Quick Selection brush with our left square bracket to decrease and right square bracket to increase the size. So what we're going to do with this image is we're going to change the hue or saturation of this background and we can either select the background first or we can select the bird. Let's start by selecting the background. We're going to click and hold and you can continue adding by clicking and holding. If you need to subtract, you can hold down the option key, which will turn the brush to a minus. So we are just selecting the background right now. And you can see it's doing an okay job, not perfect. We've got areas that got selected that we do not want. Let's go ahead and deselect that. And as long as you're on one of the quick selection icons, we can go to select subject or select subject. And this is going to read the image and try to find what the main subject is. So that did a great job of finding the silhouette of this bird on the post. There are a few areas that are a little off, but overall it's looking great. I'm going to hold down and get the quick selection tool as the brush, and I'm going to increase that selection. And let's go ahead and bring the brush size way down, and we're going to subtract the selection. So what we're doing is selecting the entire bird, and now what we want to do is inverse the selection because we're changing the background. So we want the reverse, so select inverse selection. And in the layers panel here at the bottom, you'll find a black and white circle icon, which is the adjustment layers. So when you click and hold, you're going to find hue and saturation. And what this is going to do if we look in our layers panel is it just created a mask of that selection on the adjustment layer. So we can either double click to go to the properties panel or find properties where we can adjust the hue of the background. So this was kind of a nice sunset background. Or you can explore some other colors. Maybe you want to play with the saturation a little bit. So that's looking pretty nice. I did like that sunset look. If we turn off the layer, you can preview before and after. And you can see there is a little bit of a hard line where this feathering is. So you can get the brush tool, B for shortcut, and clicking on the mask layer, if white is in the foreground, that's going to subtract from the mask. I'm going to undo Command Z, and what we want to do is have black up front. And we can change the hardness and softness of this brush here. We're on a soft round brush, and you can change the size. So I've got the hardness down right now, and we can adjust with our left square bracket and right square bracket. So let's zoom in so we can see this area much better. Bring the brush size down and we're just going to paint. We can also change the opacity so we have more of a subtle transition on the fine details. I'm just pretty roughly doing this. Overall it did a good job selecting. So now we're ready to save the Photoshop file by going to File, Save, and as long as we have more than one layer we don't want to override the original. So you could do a save as to be safe. And let's just save this PSD. And now let's do a save a copy and save a JPEG. We're going to save that at highest quality. Next, I'm going to use this image to show you how we can select a color range. Go to select color range. And in this dialog box, you can select reds and see what the result of that is for selection, or we can go to sampled colors and using this eyedropper tool, we can click and drag over the image and you can see the selection changes. If I want to add more to the selection, which I do, I want to make sure and get all the highlights and shadows. You can either click on the plus eyedropper or you can hold down shift and you'll see a little plus sign added to the dropper. So now you can see we're really getting all of that red range and you can adjust the fuzziness. If we got too much, which it looks like we did, we can use the minus and get rid of some of the extra because I really only want to change the dress. I don't want to change the red flowers in the background. So let's go with this and click OK. 
And now we can see our selection. It has grabbed a little bit of this background, which we can remove by selecting quick selection and holding down option to subtract or up here at the top, there's a minus. It's usually easier to just hold down option to remove selection. And zoom in if needed. All right, now we're gonna go to the adjustment layers icon and let's do hue saturation again. And now we can adjust the red hues in the image. You can see it is missing part of that. That's okay for now. You can see some colors look better than others. So here's where it's more problematic, where we would need to go in with the brush tool and smooth out some of those edges. And it's also very vivid, so maybe you would decrease the saturation. All right, once you've selected your color, go back to layers, and you can always adjust that later, the hue color. And what we can do is either go back to the color range selector to try to pick up more of those reds. Let's try and do that. I'm clicking on this red and I'm going to hold down shift. Make sure we get all of that and try to pick up these other areas. So now I'm going to select OK and use quick selection to get rid of some of these extra ones or we can just brush them out on the layer mask. So on the layer mask, now that we have those new selections, I'm going to do with black as the foreground and white as the background, I'm going to do a cut command X and that's given us a much better mask of her dress. And you can see there's a few other areas that we can just take the brush tool, B for shortcut, and with black as the foreground, we can mask out some of those areas that we do still want to keep, the red or orange. You can see it's also grabbed some reflections on her skin. You may want to play with the brush opacity to lightly add or take away from that. And you may want to zoom in on areas and bring the brush down much smaller. Play with the hardness of the brush. And with white in the foreground, you can click and drag to paint. If you click on an area and hold down shift, it will create a straight line to that next point. It's a little hard to see right now, so let me bring up the opacity and bring black to the foreground. And you can see when I click a point and hold down shift and click another point, it's creating a straight line versus if I just drag and paint. I'm going to undo command Z. And overall, that's looking much better. You could paint a little bit of that yellow reflection on the back of the leg and bring down the opacity still on the layer mask. And with white in the foreground, give a little bit of that new hue to match the dress. If you want to change the color again, you can either double click on this or go to the properties. And we have a nice selection of that color range. You can see more of the reflection here too, which I'm looking at. And once you're ready to save, be sure to save a Photoshop file. You don't want to override the original JPEG, so it's usually safe to go save as and select Photoshop. And now we're going to do File, Save a Copy to save a JPEG. And we want that to be maximum quality. On this image, let's see what a different paint color would look like on the walls. I'm going to pull a sample swatch by right-clicking, Copy Image, and Paste into the document. You can scale it if you need to with Command-T, which is Free Transform, under Edit. Next, I'm going to create a copy of this background with either Command-J, or drag and drop the background onto the plus sign, hide the background, and clicking on that background image, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer for solid color. And this is where we're going to sample one of these new colors. And let's move it above the image and hide the swatches layer. And here we can use blend modes to overlay the underlying wall image. We want it to look as realistic as possible, so that's likely going to be from this first section of adjustment options. Multiply is looking pretty good to me, and we can bring down the opacity slightly if we need to, just comparing. I'm going to go ahead and hide that color for now, and with the copy layer selected, let's try another selection format by holding down on quick selection or toggle by shift W. You can see that it changes the icon. Let's go to object selection tool, and as you can see when I hover over these different objects that have 
an evident edge to them. It's highlighting it. So I can just click on that object to select it. And I can also hold down shift to select other objects. You can also shift and click and drag an area and it will pick up whatever objects are within that area. So we are missing some of these small detail areas, which we can try to pick up with another quick selection tool, the brush, and use your square brackets to change the size. You can decrease it and hold down option to deselect places where the wall is showing through the plant. And zoom in if you need to. You may need to pick up some extra pieces by holding down shift to add to the selection. For now, that's gonna work. So let's turn the color back on. And on the mask, we want to remove this area of the image and only have the color on the wall. So with white on the foreground, you can do X to toggle that. You can do cut by going to either edit, cut, or command X to remove that selection of the color fill. And now it's more evident where those areas need to be removed. So now we might want to get the brush tool, B for shortcut, and change your size and hardness if you need to, and the opacity. And with the mask thumbnail selected and white as the foreground, I'm going to remove more of the image. And you may also want to do the quick selection again. You may need to click on that lower layer so it's reading the detail versus the color image, which doesn't have that form to select from. So I want to do a good job, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So just get it as close as you can. Spend a little time with it. And once you're ready to cut that new selection, go back to the layer mask and do Command X, making sure black is on the front and white in the background, and cut Command X. And this time I'm going to get the paintbrush, and with white as the foreground, I'm going to paint over some areas. If you paint over an area too much, you can either do Undo, Command Z, or swap to black as the foreground to bring that back. So we started with a somewhat lighter wall color. We can get away with a little bit more, but look if we change this much darker, you're really going to be able to see those light areas of the previous wall color. But that looks kind of cool for just being able to change the wall color. And you can turn back on those swatches and click the fill color to sample any other ones. You could also duplicate that fill color layer if you wanted to save some other layers of colors. If you were really getting particular, you could alter the levels and add adjustment layers to the base layer here. So maybe we could pull back the whites and pull the midtones a bit darker. So we only want the levels to be applied to the plant. And since we already have that plant selection, if I do Command and click on that mask, on the levels mask, I'm going to tap command I to inverse the selection mask and then deselect. And now we can change the opacity of those levels, which definitely looks better than before. So let's save our Photoshop file, file, save as, and a JPEG file, save a copy. I hope this video helps you better understand how to use selections and masks to make adjustments to your images. Thanks for watching and take care.